Hi there. Welcome to the From Lab to Launch podcast by Qualio, where we share inspiring stories from the people on the front lines of life sciences. Tune in and leave inspired to bring your life-saving products to the world. Welcome to another episode of From Lab to Launch by Qualio, where we delve into the latest innovations and insights from the life sciences industry. I'm Meg, your host, and today we welcome Salvatore Viscomi, MD, the CEO and co-founder of Boston-based kidney specialist, Karna Health. Karna Health is focused on applying technology to revolutionize kidney care by unlocking the early detection and management of chronic kidney disease. They provide clinical grade software as medical devices that deliver instant health metrics, such as creatine, EGFR, and UACR levels from small patient samples. Their platform integrates with existing healthcare systems and a lot of electronic health records, promoting proactive and patient-centric care underpinned by accurate real-time patient data. Welcome, Salvatore. It's so great to have you today. Thanks for having me, Meg. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and previous roles and how those led to the founding of Cardna Health? Sure. So I'm a physician by background, um, and uh, I trained at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, where I did my residency and stayed on staff for 14 years. Um, uh, I was very engaged with screening programs um, while a clinician at Harvard, uh, particularly lung cancer and breast cancer. The idea that identifying disease early or before it starts um, is always uh, uh, indicative of a better outcome. Um, and trying to raise awareness of those diseases. So uh, really passionate about that. And um, uh, that was on the clinical side of things. And um, on the entrepreneurial side of things, when I was a third year resident uh, with some co-residents, I started um, one of the first teleradiology services in the world that's taking imaging done from one CAT scan machine somewhere in the world, uh, images transferred somewhere else for interpretation. And so, so that sort of you know, that, that got the entrepreneurial bug in me. And um, since then, um, I've uh, supported or started several companies um, from med device companies to uh, biobanking companies and genetics companies and uh, started Carna about three years ago, really with the mission of transforming the chronic kidney disease uh, landscape and disrupting the trajectory of increasing prevalence and mortality and giving people an opportunity to avoid dialysis as part of... Uh, part of the, you know, part of the pathway. And what inspired you to focus on specifically kidney health and development of the Carna Health solutions? Yeah, so there was the opportunity really to build a platform around various biomarkers. Um, and the more time I spent learning around chronic kidney disease beyond what I already knew as a physician was about, um, well, the prevalence being 900 million people in the world, but it's getting worse year after year, right? Double mm -hmm. digit growth. Um, there's an impact study that was sponsored by AstraZeneca that in eight countries, the prevalence will be 16.5%. There are places in the world like Philippines where the prevalence is about 36%. And so it's a problem despite all the efforts in healthcare, it's getting worse. Um, two is mortality is getting worse. So it's currently the 12th cause of mortality. It's projected to be the fifth cause of mortality by 2040. And it's affecting younger people. So in addition to all the known risk factors, which are getting worse, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, uh, heat stress is a, a, a newly recognized risk factor affecting younger people in the world. And so, um, so I felt like this was a, uh, there was an unmet need in terms of uh, the problem on CKD. The problem has been really um, a disease that's been, I would say, overall neglected by, uh, apart from nephrologists who are managing these patients and apart from dialysis companies who treat the end result of chronic kidney disease, which is end-stage kidney disease, where you need a machine or a transplant to uh, sustain life, right, to replace your kidneys. Um, and it was just really, you know, mind-boggling how this is such a prevalent disease, mortality, the cost of the disease, and and how not there haven't been more efforts. So we've taken on this mission, and the mission is uh, is comprehensive, really. I think identifying disease early is important, right? So 90% of people with chronic kidney disease are unaware. And so we need to solve that problem. We need to educate and having people, have, you know, on an app, you know, uh, and that awareness is step one. Two is uh, people that 
maybe get a laboratory result with chronic kidney disease are unaware as they progress. And so doing the serial monitoring will allow us to identify when is the right time to intervene. And thirdly is um, wh where did, what happens to a patient, right? So uh, a care pathway. So if patients are identified with a certain stage, um, sort of uh, creating a roadmap of what needs to happen next. Do you need to see your primary care doctor? Do you need to see a nutritionist? Do you need to see a kidney specialist? And unfortunately, there are not enough kidney specialists in the world to manage this disease, right? So there are countries um, that may have populations of over 200 million people with 200 nephrologists in the entire country, right? So this is a real example. And so how do we use the platform to upskill the resources in healthcare that are available in a population, nurses and general doctors, to take on the responsibility of managing these patients with the support of our platform? And then finally, we really want to understand the disease better in different parts of the world, right? So there are a lot of clinical studies done in Europe and the United States, but what about in Africa? What about in the Caribbean? What about in Latin America? What about in Southeast Asia? And to really have country-specific data about why, what is going on with those patients? Why is the prevalence increasing? What are the risk factors? How do we do precision uh, monitoring and treatment uh, rather than treating everybody as the same, right? And using, you know, sort of uh, standard guidelines. Um, and then a, a platform that upskills um, uh, medical professionals to, to manage this disease. It sounds like you're coming at the crisis of kidney health at lots of different angles to solve right. lots of different right. problems around the disease. Um, how, you've kind of alluded to it around the world, but how significant, significant is the need to improve kidney testing across the globe? Um, and yeah. why is that and early testing and diagnosis so important for folks? Well, it's a global problem, you know, in the United States, you know, from from economies that are, you know, uh, wealthy nations to to uh, the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, there's no place in the world that's immune to this disease and it's growing every almost everywhere. Um, the United States, 40 million people, you know, again, uh, most are unaware. Um, and so it's uh, the idea is that we and there are healthcare disparities around the world, right? So if you're in the United States and you're African American, you're four times more likely to be on dialysis. Um, and we're finding globally there are parts of the world that have limited access to both specialists and to both testing. And so step one is really providing access, right? So the point of care testing um, can be done anywhere, right? Can be done in a clinic, can be done in a mall, can be done in a church, can be done in a pharmacy. And so the idea is don't expect patients to come to the traditional healthcare services, um, which often high-risk pa patients do not come to, um, but to go to them, right? Find where patients go. And so, so that early step of providing access, I think already diminishes healthcare disparities, right? Because we are going into communities that are often neglected and we're telling them and we're educating them and we're providing them with results. And then we're connecting them to healthcare providers to make sure that, um, their, 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 their numbers on their biomarkers are being reviewed and that the next steps are being planned for them. And the motivation from the healthcare ministries and governments and insurance companies is that chronic kidney disease that leads to end-stage kidney disease is a very expensive disease. It can be um, up to 10, 15% of a healthcare budget. And so there is motivation on um, from the government side of things to participate in, in um, controlling this problem. Um, and, um, you know, obviously saving money, but also uh, improving quality of life and, um, and labor shortage, right? So if you have young, more uh, young people that are with end-stage kidney disease, they're not really productive um, from a labor perspective. And so um, keeping an eye on that as well. Right. And you've done some recent pilot studies in Cameroon and Bermuda. What are the, some of the key takeaways you've taken from those studies? Sure. I mean, I think the uh, key takeaways, and I think early on in the infancy of this company, I think we we thought a lot about testing and everything revolved around testing. And um, as we started deploying our technology, we realized that um, testing is not enough because you could identify people um, and tell them to see a nephrologist and then they go to see a nephrologist, but there is an expensive copay and so they don't go. Or you refer the patient back to their GP and that GP doesn't refer to a nephrologist. So we realized that 
um, in addition to the testing, we needed to do more. We really need to shepherd these patients throughout the entire process, right? To make sure they, if they needed counseling, they get counseling. If they needed a specialist uh, and medication, they had access to that. Um, so we launched in Bermuda um, through the support of the government grant um, and the Bermuda Health Council. Uh, we've been there just about a year. Um, and uh, of all the people that we screened, and we screened people that had one of several risk factors, 51% uh, had chronic kidney disease of any stage. Wow. Um, and so, um, and 96% of them were unaware that had chronic kidney disease. So, uh, you know, people with chronic kidney disease are generally asymptomatic early on, right? So they're not going to their doctor and saying, oh, I think there's something wrong with my kidneys. Um, just like blood pressure, high blood pressure, it's just a, a silent killer. Um, and so, so we identified disease that was unknown. Uh, two is about 17% of the people that we screened had kidney disease at a stage which required a nephrology consultation and medication. And about 86% of them were unaware. So again, a large number of people um, that are walking around asymptomatic that actually had disease that should be intervened on. Um, and, you know, this was, this was really important because prior to our presence in, in, in Bermuda, about only of known chronic kidney disease, only 7% was stage one and two, right, early stage. And our program found about 30%, you know, early stage. And so we're skewing the diagnosis early, right? So, um, which gives everyone a better opportunity to avoid the, um, the unpleasant sequelae of transplant and, and dialysis and an opportunity for healthcare systems to save money. Um, and then we, our, our next, our next pilot was Cameroon. Um, and uh, in, in Cameroon, we tested adults um, with or without risk factors, right? We just took all comers and about 21% had chronic kidney disease. Um, and so that shows, uh, you know, just a high underlying prevalence rate uh, in certain parts of the world. Um, and that you actually don't have to screen people with risk factors. You should just screen every adult and, and, and not just screen older adults, like, you know, like in the elderly, like it's, has been thought of like for chronic kidney disease, you actually need to screen people starting their thirties and forties, because that's where the disease is starting in parts of the world. Um, and we're about to launch a, um, a second phase of, of Cameroon where we'll be doing 35,000 people in September, uh, and, uh, about a hundred, 150,000 people in April of next year. And so, so these programs are going from pilot to uh, much larger, either regional or, or national opportunities. That's great. The global impacts you're having with Carna Health already. That's fantastic. And making some impacts in some underserved communities. Um, how does your point of care testing fit into Carna's health strategy for managing CKD? And what benefits does point of care testing offer over traditional diagnostic methods? Yeah, I mean, I think the traditional diagnostic methods, which are very accurate um, and have been available for many, many years, um, um, are not solving the problem, right? So, so uh, the answer is not more laboratories. Um, the answer is how do you provide laboratory quality testing to um, in a large scale, right? And so the point of care testing allows for access outside of you know large hospital systems um and it provides testing in a way that's easier right so um vinipuncture is like taking a needle and drawing blood out which a lot of people don't like and um the point of care testing allows for you know finger prick testing and urine sample testing to be done and so access you know being available more widely um there are countries that we work in that have many islands you know, could be thousands of islands. So to be able to provide that that quality testing um, more broadly uh, and, uh, and then real-time results. So at the time of a screening session, uh, someone will have results that day and speak to somebody about their results. Um, so you have someone's attention, right? Because we know attention span these days is um, diminished. So you have someone and you can educate them saying, here are your results. You're normal. We'd like to see you in a year because you have risk factors. You're mild disease. We recommend you do these things. Um, or we actually concerned that you have disease advanced enough, but hey, there's hope because we can intervene now. 
Um, so we do all that in a visit, you know, with the, you know, with someone's uh, attention. Um, and also because there's a patient app, they're engaged, right? So they have the results and education at their fingertips and a healthcare provider also has the results. So they can triage the patients that sort of need, you know, interventions now versus people that need follow-up. Um, so I think the point of care testing is a good first step in terms of access um, and real-time results, right? That engages the patient. And then the platform, again, needs to go beyond that in terms of managing the care of those of, of those patients. And I use the word patients loosely because they're, they're really people, right? They're people that are generally asymptomatic. And it's so common, you know, like, in, again, some places, 36% of the population that um, we want them, the awareness that this is a, a common problem, um, um, but there is the opportunity to uh, change that trajectory of you will end up um, needing uh, renal replacement therapy too. You could be managed either with lifestyle or potentially um, one of several medications which are effective. That's great. Um... And you've talked a lot about the point of care testing and early intervention and, and diagnosing early. How great is the need for improved kidney testing and care? And what is early kidney testing and diagnosis? Like, why is that so crucial for improving that, the overall health outcomes besides just, you know, delaying or mitigating the need for a transplant or dialysis or their other outcomes? Yeah. So, I mean, I think um, chronic kidney disease um, is uh, has often other comorbid conditions such as diabetes and mm. um, hypertension and just cardiovascular disease in general. So if you take someone in a community um, that's asymptomatic and you treat their chronic kidney disease, you're also helping out their other diseases. Right. And so so it, 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 it by by a side effect, it, it's helping because we do blood pressure checks as well. And so um, we are managing other diseases as well uh, in the process of chronic kidney disease. Um, and, and and why that, you know, for chronic kidney disease, it's pretty simple. You need a blood test and a urine test, right? And these are not expensive tests. Um, and so um, that allows for our solution to be very scalable, right? So there are things that, you know, require an MRI or a CAT scan for screening, and that can be problematic. Those are expensive and often unavailable in many parts of the world. Um, our testing doesn't doesn't have those challenges, right? The challenges are really how do you deploy our technology and our platform uh, over in millions of lives, different parts of the world. With the you know they each have their own healthcare challenges and very different type of healthcare systems. Yeah, yeah. Never mind the language and cultural differences right. too from from country to country. Yeah, that's amazing that you've had such an impact on so many countries so far. I can't wait to see what Karna does next. Um, quality is obviously very close to our own hearts here at Qualio. What role has quality played in helping Karna get to where it is now? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think through our pilots, um, we try to learn how to be better. Like we try to, you know, in terms of on the medical device side, you know, we've learned about um, our technology, you know, in terms of certain climates and humidity. Um, you know, the temperature control is really important, right? So, so little things like that in terms of, you know, a uh, chain of, of, of climate uh, uh, control of, of devices and strips is important. Uh, and then sort of workflow, right? In terms of what is the right workflow in terms of getting a patient into a center, uh, testing them and getting them, you know, ed educated and, and, and seen by a clinician and that process. Uh, and then what the platform needs to do, right? So the platform, certainly, I think we've, we've realized that the education component is really important to our success, right? So patients really understanding what the kidneys do and, and what, what chronic kidney disease means uh, in a way that's um, that they can understand. Um, uh, and, and from a physician perspective, helping them go through, um, and they may not be, they may not be kidney experts, but but helping them become kidney experts through our platform, right? In terms of giving them the tools. Um, and, you know, ultimately I, I think where we're gonna uh, show the most quality is gonna be on predictive analytics because um, uh, to be able to say the population of Cameroon or the Philippines, you know, when after you test uh, you know, millions of people and have data is that how, how is that population different than others? How are individuals in that population? Because 
even in one of these countries, the risk factors vary. And so I'm um, not treating somebody as a statistic saying, okay, you have chronic kidney disease stage four, here's your treatment, but actually saying, based on everything we know about you and your risk factors and your family history and your job and you know where you live in the world in terms of temperature and humidity, you know, we can capture that information from your smartphone that we can, um, we can provide um, a more precise way of, of treating you as a patient. That's great. As someone whose background was in public health, it's really great to hear an entrepreneur who's making such a global impact on public health um, across the globe. So, so great to hear. What is your vision for where Karna Health will be in the next three to five years? Where else in the globe are you planning on going? Yeah. I mean, we'd like to be everywhere. I mean, I think, you know, we've, um, we're establishing uh, a presence um, in, um, you know, probably about eight or nine countries in Africa. Um, uh, through the Bermuda relationship, we're going to expand uh, south from there into the Caribbean. Um, uh, we have some early opportunities in Europe. So we're looking at the UK and Turkey. Uh, and then again, in, in Southeast Asia, you know, starting with the Philippines, we're looking to. And uh, uh, these are large populations. So, our, you know, we really want to be synonymous with CKD uh, improvement. So when the word CKD comes up, we like for Karna to be in the same sense about um, you know, we're mission driven. Um, and I, I think we'll, we'll have, um, continue to have, we have great support from multinational companies, from governments. Um, uh, I, I think we're going to raise awareness of the disease. We're going to film a documentary as well about the work that we're doing. And so, um, yeah, I think we'll continue to attract more partnerships and, and, and more people to the team experts. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we, I think, you know, we're, we'll be on a pathway to, um, I hope, change those uh, those awful numbers that I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast about increasing mortality and prevalence. Um, I think our solution on a global level will have an impact on, on mortality and prevalence. I feel like you just might change the tide there. I'm excited to see. Do you have plans to expand your testing beyond CKD? Uh, we do. I think... Um, uh, Many governments have asked us and insurance companies and other partners, why not do diabetes and cardiovascular disease? Uh, the idea is to develop expertise and, and traction in chronic kidney disease because it's such a large problem and to focus there. Uh, and, then, and then add on, um, the platform is built to be flexible. And so the natural sort of integrations would be diabetes with point of care testing around HbA1c and, mm -hmm. and glucose, and then cardiometabolic disease, we're already doing high blood, you know, we're already testing for um, blood pressure, uh, so screening for hypertension, but also to add lipid testing, which can be done in point of care, right? And I think with, um, with chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, I think we tackle three massive problems, um, um, but we wanna do that um, responsibly um and um so focus on ckd and then introduce those once we've had um success with our platform in a, in a, in a country around ckd terrific great stuff coming from karna i can't wait to see what you do next and can't wait to catch that documentary that will be exciting great. and our last question is more of a fun one we like to ask each of our guests if we ran into you at the bookstore or your local library in what section would we find you salvatore oh um Probably biographies. Have you read a good one lately you could recommend to um, me? Yeah, Niccolo Smile um, is one about Machiavelli. Okay. And so I think people use the term Machiavellian and, you know, has a certain thing, but to really understand uh, who Machiavelli was and, you know, his, his life and his career, I thought that was very intriguing. Yeah. Ooh, I'll have to pick that up at my library. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Salvatore, so much for joining us today. Where can those who want to follow along with your journey and Karna's journey go to find and connect more? Uh, sure. We have a, a website, karna.health, um, and uh, we're on LinkedIn as well. Uh, if you want to follow us, you know, karna.health. And um, Meg, thank you for taking the time to hear about our story and, uh, and spreading the word. I appreciate it. Of course, this has been really inspiring. I'm so pleased to have gotten to chat with you and learn about Karna's mission and and 
point of care testing for CKD. It's amazing work you're doing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of From Lab to Launch, brought to you by Qualio. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give the show a positive review. It really helps us out. For more information about Qualio, our guest today, or to be a guest on a future episode, please refer to the show notes. Until next time.